Today's lesson is on slope, and it's the start of chapter 6. This can be found in section 6.1 of your textbook. And the textbook does a pretty good job of this section if you want to follow along. The learning intentions for today are, number one, to be able to define slope. And you're going to have to be able to define it in a few different ways, or at least recognize when it is said in a different way that it is slope that's what's being asked for. And number two is to be able to calculate slope from a graph. So if we gave you a graph, could you calculate that slope? Or if you were given two points, um, two coordinates on an xy grid, could you calculate the slope between those two points? So our first learning intention was to be able to define slope. And slope is, I've got a bunch of different things here. First, slope is a measure of how one quantity changes related to another quantity. Okay, so maybe as time goes on, time's changing, maybe the height of something changes. And with slope, we're specifically relating to straight lines or linear equations. Another way to think of slope is how steep something is. Okay, if you had a road, you're driving along, and then it goes up, that would be a really steep road to drive on compared to if you were asked to drive along a road, sorry, if you were asked to drive along a road and then had a slight incline. This would be less steep than this. So how steep something is would mean it had to have a bigger slope. This might have a slope of 10, while this only has a slope of 2. You could also be driving and then go downhill. So your steepness, how steep the road is, well, suddenly you're going down. So you'd have a negative slope. And slope's going to be treated like reading. We always read left to right. Um, if you think of slopes as in positive and negative terms, going left to right, up is positive, up is positive, down is negative. Another way to think of slope is something we just did in the last chapter. We learned rate of change. And the rate of change is how much something's changing going up or down, it's y, compared to how much something is changing in x, going across. We also have a slope for for a formula for slope. Slope is small m. Okay? And this is a formula that's on your formula sheet, so not something you have to memorize, but you will need to know it. And slope, or small m, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's assuming you were given two coordinates. And the first coordinate, so coordinates are x, y coordinates. And how do you know if it's x1 or if it's x2 or y1 or y2? Well, name them. If you call this point 1, then it would be x1, y1, because the 1 from coordinate from point x, the x, sorry, from coordinate 1 and the y from coordinate 1. This would be x2, y2, because it's the x from coordinate 2 and the y from coordinate 2. These are not squareds. Notice they're down lower, so that's an x2. And the last one, um, the one you'll hear a lot, will be the rise over the run. And these all mean the same thing. So rise over run, rise means up and down. When you rise up in the morning, you wake up, you get up out of bed. So rise is how much it's changing and why, up and down. Divide by the run. If you're running along, how much it's changing in x. So all of these are ways that will hopefully you can understand slope. And if you see one of them, you're expected to recognize it as slope. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to determine the slope of a line. And we're going to determine the slope of a line on a graph from a picture. So let me grab a line here. Now, for this... Let's imagine I'm going through this point here and this point here. So to find the slope of the line, there were a bunch of ways to do it. We can find the rate of change, which how much y is changing compared to x. We can call that the rise over the run, which is the same thing. We could find these two points, our coordinates here, and we could put them into a slope formula. So let's try a couple. First, let's look at rate of change, because that's what we learned in the last chapter. So the rate of change is how much it's changing, or it was delta y, divide by delta x. So how much y is changing in relation to x? And in this one, from this point to this point, because that's where it's going through the boxes nicely, it's going down 3, and it's going over 7. So left to right, it's going down. So we have negative 3 over 7. So there is our slope. The rise is going down 3, the run is going over 7. So when you think of the term I said before, rise over run, 
Rise over run is just a nice way to remember delta y over delta x. Rise, how much it's changing up and down, compared to run, how much it's changing left and right. If we were to use our formula, we need to give this some coordinates. This coordinate here is negative 5, 3, okay, because it's x, y, and I'm calling this point 1, so it's x1, y1. And this point over here is the point 2, 0, okay, because it's over 2, it's up 0, and we'll call this point 2, so x2, y2. And now in our slope formula, let's do that here. Our slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 minus y1. Well, y2, y2 is 0 minus y1, y1 is 3, over x2 is 2, minus x1, minus 5, and be careful with your positive and negatives. 0 minus 3 is negative 3, 2 minus a minus is plus, so 2 plus 5 is 7, and you can see our answer here is the same. So when you're given a line, you can look at it visually, how much is it going up or down compared to how much is it going across, or you can use your slope formula. Let's look at another example here. Okay, so for our next example, let's look at another line, and we'll go like this, starting at this point. There, so I have my line. And I'm gonna use some points. It's going through here, it's going through here, it's going through here going through here. And you'll see when it's a linear relation or a straight line, it's going to have the same slope no matter which points you choose. So let's look at this, determine the slope. Let's look at it as rise over run, which is the same as how much is y is changing, delta y over delta x, how much x is changing. So in this, how much is it changing from the rise, going up or down? Well, from one point to the next, it's going up. 1. From one point to the next, it's going up 1. From one point to the next, it's going up 1. And now what is our run? Well, our run from one point to the next is going over 3. Over 3. Over 3. So think of it as a step ladder. We're going over 3, up 1, over 3, up 1, over 3, up 1. So our slope is the rise, how much it's changing up or down, divide by the run. And the rise is going up 1. The run is going over 3. So our slope is 1 third. It goes up 1 unit for every 3 units it goes over. And if we were to do this using um, our points, we could use this point 0, 0. We'll call that point 1, so x1, x2. And it doesn't matter what points we choose, because it's linear, it'll always be the same. And this one is the point over 3, up 1. And that's x2, y2. So our slope formula on your formula sheets is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And the thing about this formula, you're going to use it a lot. It'll be used a lot in the future sections of this chapter. You'll probably start to memorize it. So y2. So point 2, right? I named this one point 1, this one point 2 y2 was 1. y1, oh see it looks like I made a mistake here, I did x1, x2, sorry, x1, y2, this should be y1, because this is my point 1. So 1 minus 0. Now x2 minus x1, x2 is 3, x1 is 0, <coughs> 1 minus 0 is 1, 3 minus 0 is 3, so my slope is 1 third. So visually, one third, or from my calculations, one third, it's the same either way.
Now, three things we'll just wrap up really quick. It may ask you to draw a slope of negative 4 thirds. Some people get stuck because they don't know where to start. Well, the thing is, a slope of negative th 4 thirds just represents how steep something is. So you can pick any point. I could pick this point right here to start. Um, let's see. So I could, sorry, I could pick this point right here. Now, negative 4 thirds. The important thing is slope is rise over run. So my slope is negative 4. So from this point, I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4. And my run is 3. So I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3. And that's my next dot. So my line is going from here to there. Okay. So that would be how to draw a slope. And you could, I could have drawn this from anywhere. Another point I could have chose right here as my starting point. Rise of negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Run of 3, 1, 2, 3. And my line in this case, these lines have the same slope. They're both down 4 over 3. Okay, And looking at it backwards, it's also if it was going down 4 over 3, going backwards up, well, it would be over 3, up 4, and it should be going through that point there. So you could connect that line. So the last things we need to look at are what happens for a slope that is not the straightest line, but perfectly flat. So when we think of steepness, steepness going up, steepness going down. Well, when you are perfectly horizontal, your slope is zero. Okay. The reason is because if you had two points, um, let's do this really quick. We have the point 1, 2, and over here we have the point 4, 2. When you do your y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, our little formula, let's call this point 1, this point 2. So point 2 would be 2 minus 2 over 4 minus 1. 0. Divide by anything is 0. So your slope is 0. There is no steepness. You are flat. And now for the next one, we could look at a line that goes, um, well, certainly the way I've drawn it isn't perfect. But if this was perfectly up and down, our slope is called undefined. And the reason it's undefined is how steep is perfectly up? Is it 10? Well, no, because 10 is up 10 over 1. Is it 100? No, because 100 is up 100 over 1. It's undefined because the slope just isn't known. The reason why, if you did this little formula again, you might get a number like this. And the one number one rule of math, you can never divide by 0, so it's undefined. Your assignment today is page 339, questions 4 to 9, 11 to 13, 17 to 19. And slope is one of those things that's going to haunt you for the rest of the year, because we're in chapter 6, chapter 7. These both are slope-heavy it's the first one of chapter six. Please, 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 if you don't understand slope, come see me. Ask me for extra help. You really need to understand these concepts. And once you get them, these, it may seem like a lot of questions. I want you to do all of them, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. If you're not getting it quickly, then you need more practice. So once you're getting them quick, you'll just burn through it. Okay, good luck. Stay classy in math class.